Hello everyone, it's blog time. Well, it's a special blog because I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating the launch of Mixbus version four. Um, now, if you are a interested in my signature Mixbus bundle, the Russell Cottier Mixbus, which you can find more information out at mixbundles.com, a link in below. And also, if you go to the Harrison Consoles um, webpage, go to the online shop and click on specials, um, you'll see all the specials. And right at the top, there is my um, signature bundle is there as well. And it's like 40% off the recommended retail price. Well, that now comes with Mixbus version four. Now, I, I've been really lucky because I've had a few weeks to play around with Mixbus version four before it came out. And I've been very excited, but I couldn't really say too much until now. So, um, Let's zoom over to the computer and have a look at some of the functions that have been added to Mixbus version four. Now, again, I've done a video um, about the difference between 32C and Mixbus standard Mixbus version. Um, both versions will have a version four um, and these features exist in the 32C flavor as well as the standard flavor. Um, Okay, cool. So um, there's lots of great new features. Um, I'm gonna flip over to the, the screen so I can read them out for you and show you some of the features live. Um, but yeah, my favorite feature has to be the, let me just get it right because I don't wanna say the name wrong. Import PT session. Yes, that is what you think it is. Import PT session. <laughs> hey, so cool. Right, let's go and have a look at Mixbus version four. So we're in Mixbus. Um, now I will warn you, my screen recording software is slightly interfering with um, processing. So some of the graphics might be slightly laggy, but that's not the case in the normal application. So um, let's have a look at the GUI changes. Well, first of all, actually, let's have a look. Import PT session. Yes, it imports the active um, playlist audio in a PTX or PTF session. Um, no, none of the plugins or anything, which is probably what you want anyway. And it's been really useful for me in at least three occasions in the last week or so. So um, let's look at the GUI. The um, transport has been reduced in size. There's a global control for auto input, all in and all disk input monitoring setups. And we also have this navigation, like a mini navigation bar. What's it called? Let's get the tool tip for it. Navigation timeline. Um, and you can jump to markers or you can jump to positions and it will move your playhead. Well, why is this useful? Because you know, the playhead's here. Well, it's useful because the mixer window is now attached and you get a consistent toolbar across, or persistent toolbar across the top. You don't have to have that. You can detach it and reattach it with the editor and mixer attach window controls. So that's the main sort of alteration in the GUI. Um, I will also mention that you can now move, I haven't done this properly, so I don't want to show it you today, but you can move the uh, markers for each bar in the timeline if you were say trying to make a tempo map for a live recording a live performance that wasn't done to a click um, and so that will then allow all your time relevant um, synced plugins to, um, to to sync throughout the the course of a mix even if the the tempo is changing um, so that's a couple of cool new features that have been added so let's jump over to the mix window Again, I'm making this as quick as possible because I, I already did a video on this and it ended up like 38 minutes and I thought no one's going to watch that. So let's do it super quick. Um, the uh, mixer strips, channel strips have changed. Key controls are hidden up here. Um, though you get a little mini icon for um, for the uh, for the phase flip as well, which is useful. And there's also a VCA button. So I've set up a base VCA. You set up VCAs with Command Shift N or whatever the equivalent is on your platform, because remember, Mixbus is a multi-platform system. And VCAs pop up along the right-hand side next to the master fader, um, or in between the master fader, uh, sorry, after the monitor section which I'll hide for now. So I've got um, 
I've got a, a base one set up and I'm just gonna go and find my base tracks here. Um, base channels, and there we go, it's moving. You can assign um, you can assign more than one VCA if you have multiple VCAs to the same channel, which means you could say have a drums VCA and then Tom's VCA so you can ride the Tom's separately. And it's different than using a mix bus because the processing processing doesn't occur with the VCA. So you're not changing gain structure in the same way as you are if you are running through a group or mix bus group. Um, there's also this really cool feature, the spill button. Check this out. If I click spill, it just gives me the channels that are assigned to that VCA. Click it again, everything comes back. And likewise, I click shells, I just get the shells, I click metal, I just get the metal. Um, really cool feature, kind of reminiscent of some um, live mixing consoles that do that. So let's talk about the mix buses now. This is a new feature, by the way, this spill control. The mix buses have been slightly upgraded. You've got a master assign, master bus assign button in the middle. We've got a stereo width control. Well, hey, I've been waiting for that actually, and I was really excited. It arrived um, this this version, um, and I saw it and I thought, yes, that is uh, that's going to stop me needing to put a plug in in up here because um, sometimes I like to change the stereo width of. Um, components during a mix. So I'll pan my guitars hard and then I'll bring in the bus. Um, and likewise, I don't always use my reverbs and delays fully panned. There's even a, a well, it's really a balance, I think, because it's a stereo, but it's it's pan left and right. Um, what else have we got? Well, we've got um, some new plugins, the A um, EQ and the A compressor and the A inline scope. Mm. Excuse me, I'm drinking tea here. Uh, studios run on tea in the UK. Um, I guess it's coffee in the US, but um, tea is tea is the uh, the, the the prime uh, fuel for recording studios in the UK. I think. So um, I'm just going to show you a little bit of audio running through here. I, I've not got the audio set to record, so you won't hear it, but you will see um, you'll see this. Uh, inline scope showing up um, some uh, some nice little uh, graphics. So there we go. So you, it's kind of like the um, the sort of forward backward view um, that you get in Harrison Implement in their film mixing consoles. I've been doing that for a long time. Um, there's also a compressor which has an, an EQ. So if I dropped in an EQ, you would see the EQ curve. Um, and that's only available on five of the plugins, these new A plugins. Um, you can get the normal controls still, and you can spill out the normal controls um, into the uh, into the plugin area. Um, but um, yeah, kind of useful. It sits again within that ethos of having everything available on screen to view at one point, um, that which is Mixbus's sort of really clever feature. So that's VCAs. Um, yeah, so I think we've covered most of the key things there. There's also um, some new um, uh, MIDI stuff. Um, some, there's a load of new plugins, but MIDI instruments. There's a couple of new MIDI instruments. Um, and I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you uh, a new one, which I particularly like, which is the uh, Red Zeppelin drum kit multi and it's a really basic basic recorded drum kit but you know there's some great records being made with just a few drum samples think uh, Def Leppard Hysteria the drums on that sound amazing and they're not deep sampled in any way they're just perfect and and I don't know how many samples are included in um, in the system here um, but the Red Zeppelin kit sounds great and it's really effective. I've just done one kind of little demo track with it and it, it was a pleasure to mix. Um, so uh, the this has changed a little bit depending on what version of 3 you're using, um, but the, um, the multi-outputs system is a little bit easier to use. So let's just go and find that MIDI track. There we go, Red Zeppelin. 
and yeah it's sort of a basic kind of um, drum kit uh, there's a general MIDI sound font as well and I believe you can you can also uh, there's also a, a, a player for SD2 if I'm getting that right um, sound font file um, uh, sample uh, files um, I'm going to do another video on that. It's not something I've used a massive amount because I'm, I'm sort of I do most of my drums in Slate um, and import my own drums or Contact. Um, so yeah, that's that's the sort of the basics. Um, again, if you are buying the Russell Cotty and Mix bundle, um, you you get version four. Um, I'm not sure if that's been updated on the website yet, but you do get version four and you get the um, XTEG Expander Gate plugin and you get the character bundle, which is the vocal character, the bass character and the drum character plugins. Um, you can get that from mixbundles.com or you can go to the harrisonconsoles.com website and go to the um, online store and then specials and that will take you through to the specials and you'll see a picture of my ugly face and you will be able to pick if that's the one you want if you don't feel that bundle is going to suit you then no worries you know go for something that will be appropriate for you but I can definitely say that that mixed bus version 4 is is you know proving to be really very effective I also want to mention Lua scripting. Now, the implementation of Lua scripting is pretty um, useful. Uh, there is going to be, um, a, I don't think I've got this because this is a pre-release version, but um, so I can't strictly show you. Um, so let's have a look. Lua, Lua script manager. There will be a load of scripts in here. Um, one of the scripts is a desk reset, which is fantastic. Normalize your desk in a fraction of a second. Um, the other important one is the trim mode. Now on SSL's um, early automation systems and some other automation systems, um, this exists on some DAWs as well, um, there is a process called either relative or offset or um, uh, trim mode. And basically you can um, make a mix and then apply a, a certain mode and all your faders will return to Unity. And then you can use those faders to fine control any alterations to that mix. Well, there is a Lua script that will do that. It drops a trim plugin before the fader um, and basically allows you to do um, a, a basic mix and then bring everything back to zero, but that mix is still carried across and then you can do your fine control. So for example, if you had an electric guitar that was down here um, and you were trying to do fine control here, you know, it's very difficult to do any less than, well, let's say here, you know, a decibel is, is quite a, a short distance at that point. But when you're using it up here, you can really move up and down in the range of a single decibel. So that's why that's implemented, and um, I'm very excited about that because that's something I've been waiting for in Mixbus. And you know, I, I honestly can't think of anything else that I want for when version five comes along. But I'm sure uh, it's going to rock as much as version four does. Uh, in the meantime, go get this; it's brilliant. Um, so as I say, yeah, check out mixbundles.com or go to harrisonconsoles.com um, and. Um, get yourself Mixbus 4. It's really tasty. I'll see you next time. Happy recording.